Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends, get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, viewers. You are welcome to God's presence this morning. And we want to thank God for the privilege and the opportunity to hear his word from the Daily Fountain devotional. Our prayer is that the good Lord will speak to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Eternal God, you are so good. Your loving kindness endures forever. Thank you so much for enlisting us among the living. Thank you so much for imputing in us what it takes to stand before you. On our own, O oh God, we can do nothing. We depend on you for grace. As we hear your word this morning, Lord, speak to us. Give us grace like never before. Cause your word to bear fruit in our heart. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Child of God, we shall be looking at the topic, the danger of familiarity. The danger of familiarity. We will take our text from the book of Matthew, chapter 13. We will read from verse 53. Now it came to pass, when Jesus had finished this parable, that he departed from there. When he had come to his own country, he taught them in their synagogue, so that they were astonished and said, Where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? Is this not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brothers James, Joas, Simeon, and Judas? And his sisters? Are they not all with us? Where then did this man get all these things? So they were offended at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his own country and in his own house. Now, he did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. May the Lord grant us understanding. The danger of familiarity. Whenever you are taking a walk and you see a right up danger zone, it simply means that area is a no-go area. If you see, especially on walls, you will see electric wire for security. And what is normally written on it is danger. Do not touch. It simply means what is there is capable of killing. So it is better to keep up from it. We are talking about the danger of familiarity. When you are talking about being familiar with something, you are talking about having good knowledge of it. You are talking about having a good grasp, having a good concept of what that is saying. You are talking about being acquainted to both something or someone or an idea. When you talk about you being familiar with something, we're talking about you being friendly with someone or with something. And when we are laying emphasis on the danger of being familiar or falling in love, or thinking you have enough knowledge. There are some things that when you think you have sufficient knowledge of it, and you can dabble into it without taking 
caution. It becomes dangerous. And your life becomes a stake. What we are talking about is like someone that is walking in a zoo. And every morning he goes to feed the lions. And one day he thinks that he has been feeding the lions for the past 365 days. And then he chooses to take the lion for granted. Only for him to open the cage of the lion and to walk into it. Thinking that he has become familiar and friendly. So the harm, the danger, or what is in the lion that makes the lion dangerous has been taken away. He takes it for granted, the child of God. The life of that man will be at stake. The danger of getting used to something that is supposed to preserve your life. Where we read is a story that Jesus was sharing himself, an encounter that Jesus had with his people. If you look at this passage, apart from some of the foundational things that Jesus did in Nazareth, this was one among the first things that he did. Jesus was an itinerary, itinerary preacher. And after he had preached in several other cities and several places, the Bible says Jesus decided to visit his country home. And remember, for everywhere Jesus went to, Jesus was a master teacher. So anywhere he went to, he taught and souls were delivered. Lives were rescued. People were healed. People believed in him, fell in love with him. Not for who he is or who he was, but for the mighty works that they saw in him. So Jesus demonstrated all of these things. That's why if you look at the beginning part of, of the passage, that when Jesus Christ had finished teaching a lot of parables, he left and visited his country home and met his countrymen. He decided to worship that Sunday morning in his home church where his relatives, brothers and sisters, and even his parents were worshipping. And from where we read, the Bible says, Jesus also preached in his church that day. And he spoke powerfully under the influence of the Holy Spirit. He spoke with authority. He spoke with vigor. He spoke with intention to convince the people for the purpose of the kingdom. And the response he's got was that the, the, the people were astonished. The people were surprised at his teaching. Their essence of being surprised was not because of the inspiration that came out of the teaching. Their essence of being surprised was because they had known the history of Jesus Christ. Child of God, I want you to understand something. Whenever you neglect a container, the possibility of losing the content is very high. These people have watched Jesus grow up. They knew when and where he was born. They knew the people he grew up with. I want to believe even the temple studies that he attended, some of his classmates should have been there and his neighbors. They saw him grow. They decided to look at the humanity of him, forgetting that, that he was a career of divine presence. They forgot that. And when he preached and they saw power, the Bible says they were angry because of the way God was using him. Not necessarily because of the power, but because they knew him. I can imagine them even mentioning the names of his parents, which they did. We know you. We know. We, we will know your mother. They called the mother by name. 
They called the brothers and sisters by name. And they took the message for granted. Because they thought that they were familiar with Jesus. Familiar with Jesus. There are so many men that we have in church. Because that day, Jesus encountered two categories of people. And we will look at them carefully. The first categories of people are people that are familiar with the church. The people who are familiar with the environment of the church. They know the history of the church. They even know the history of the man of God. They knew when he was born. They have been there from the foundation of the place. Be they were there when it was a tent. Before it became a synagogue, they were there. So they understood the story. They knew how things have been done. They knew they were, they were church traditional carriers. So when Jesus came in the power of the Holy Spirit, they took his message for granted. It is one thing to be a churchman, to fall in love with the things of the church. But hear me, it is another for you to allow the power of the Holy Spirit to permeate into the fabrics of your system. Because it is always difficult for a churchman to be a spiritual man. Because so many churchmen hold on to tradition and they remain there. So when they saw Jesus manifesting in the power of the Holy Spirit, they were holding on to the traditions that they knew. So the Bible said, they were angry. They were angry. They saw him as someone that they, they already knew. So the content of the power of what he was saying didn't mean anything to him. It didn't mean anything to them. Because they were still holding on the tradition that they had known and they had watched Jesus grow. Hear me. There are some of us that... Because we have found, we are familiar with church environment, we have decided to take church articles for granted. You have decided to take those things that have been dedicated for the use of God for granted. I remember in one of our churches that men came, entered into the Holy of Holies and cut away way with valuable materials from the Holy of Holies. Because they are used to the church environment. So they saw entry into the altar as, a, as an ordinary thing. They suddenly saw the house of God as an ordinary room that they can just walk in carelessly. So many churchmen that have taken church for granted, they go to church and after eating, they litter the church environment. Because they see it as a normal house. There is no man that takes God for granted, that reaps from the blessings that has been embedded in the Lord. So when the relatives of Jesus Christ received the message, the message could not enter because they took the messenger for granted. Hear me. So many people that would have received deliverance and miracles from the Lord are not being able to receive it because they are neglecting the messenger. Of course, you can neglect the messenger, but the content of the message, if you take it for granted, then the blessings that lies in the message, you cannot rip of it. So, Jesus' brothers were angry because they had an understanding of how Jesus grew up. Have you ever asked yourself why so many preachers' wives and children find it difficult to reap from the grace that is upon the life of the preacher? It is not far from it. They constantly see the man as an ordinary man. And then they forget that he carries an extraordinary God. 
And because they are taking the man they know and not the greatness that is behind the God of that man, they have lost the glory that is found or the, the grace that the man carries. That is why you see preachers, we pray for people who receive their healing. Testimonies, we abound all over the place. But when it comes to their family, it is difficult for those testimonies to be manifested because the people there have taken them for granted. And there is one thing about spiritual work. When you take a servant of God for granted, the ministry that is upon the life of the servant of God cannot be translated into your body or into your condition. It cannot. Because for you to be able to believe in that man, to, for you to be able to believe in the young man that the Lord has sent, it means that you must have faith in that young man. You must have faith in the servant of God. Because when you have faith in him, then the miracle and the testimonies that he carries will be translated into you. Jesus' brothers did not believe him. They took him for granted because they had known him. One other thing that is very, very important that we need to mention is the attitude of some men of God towards the word of God and the calling of ministry. A good number of preachers have turned ministry from calling to a routine job. The work of ministry is not a month-end job. It's not a job, a work you do and wait for salary at the end of the month. That is why preachers don't go on strike. Whether pay or no pay, stipend, no stipend, they don't go on strike because it's not a month-end paid job. It is a calling. So when someone that God has placed to rightly divide the word of truth suddenly gets familiar with the preaching of the word, the power of God leaves him. And the rest of his work is just a routine work that carries no power. For you that God has given responsibility to divide his work, if the word of God is not new to you every morning, every day you wake up, you are familiar with the story of the birth of Jesus. You are familiar with creation. You are familiar with the fall of man. You are familiar with the coming of Jesus. You are familiar with those stories such that they mean nothing to you, child of God. You will lose the content. And we, we must understand this. There was something that the enemy did in Genesis chapter 3, which we must be conscious of. Because whenever the enemy wants to strike a man that is standing, first and foremost, he weakens the fabrics of what he is standing on. The people that were listening to Jesus could not believe him because the fabrics of their faith was weakened. That is why at the end Jesus said, he couldn't do anything in his village because the people did not believe him. The fabrics of their faith was weakened. When the enemy entered into the garden, the understanding of the instruction that the Lord gave towards the fruit that was forbidden, the fabrics of their understanding was weakened. So they went ahead. Did not just plug of it, but ate of it. And they fell into the ditch. Whenever a man gets familiar with something uh, or someone, no matter how highly placed, if it is a person, the person becomes common. When you get familiar with something, that thing becomes common. So Jesus became a common boy that grew up in Nazareth. So the people couldn't listen to him. What 
part of your spiritual life have you started taking for granted? Is it the study of the word of God? You wake up and instead of devoting yourself, pouring your life into the word of God, you suddenly remembered that you have just finished reading Genesis to Revelation. <laughs> Hear me, child of God. The essence of the Bible is for spiritual nourishment and not for memorization and recitation. So when God gives you an opportunity for you to tap grace out of the world, and then you suddenly remember how you have memorized everything, and you tell yourself that the whole thing is still in the brain, and then you walk away, the spiritual content of the scripture will be far away from you. So even when Jesus Christ spoke mysteries, the Bible says he spoke powerfully. And because the people, the people were used to memorizing the Torah, they hardly could reap of the spiritual content. And they took it for granted. They took it for granted. Child of God, for the purpose that God has called you into ministry, do not for any day take the word for granted. There are men that because in the Old Testament, some men, some priests died because they raised strange fire. The Bible called it strange fire before the presence of the Lord. They understood the principles of raising fire. But because, do you know that when the enemy wants to weaken a particular fabric, the first thing he lets you know is that this process is too monotonous, is too clumsy. The process is too archaic. Hear me. The process of doing whatever spiritual responsibilities that has been handed over to you, as soon as you start seeing it as a process that is too long, you are beginning to take it for granted. You are beginning to become familiar with it. And as soon as you start getting familiar with it, you will start neglecting it because the two go together. So these people understood the tradition of raising fire, but they left the tradition and decided to cut corners so that they will raise fire. And the fire became strange and God struck them. Hear me? Your service before God, your worship life must not be taken for granted. I remember a young man that had responsibility to fast. And all he said was that Jesus had fasted for him. So all through his life, he doesn't need fasting to survive. These are spiritual fabrics that are being weakened by the forces of the earth. And whenever your fabric is weakened, your falling is close. One other thing I must not fail to mention. How do you treat your man of God? The God representative that has been placed before you, how are you seeing him? How are you treating him? Are you seeing him as just some man that is jobless and is occupying space in your church? If you go to some places, men of God are seen as troublemakers, that they are the trouble of the church. And hear me, it is dangerous for you to draw a battle line against the anointed. Because you attract generational cause before you. How are you treating the message that God is using them to preach? It has become quite appalling that recently when messages are going on, people are down there picking up errors. Picking errors from the message. Hear me. 
The Lord has not called you to be an editor. But God has called you for you to allow the word to find a place in your heart. The entrance of the word, the Bible says, it gives life, it gives understanding. But when the word of God is going on and you tell yourself that you've been hearing preaching for the past 25 years, what have you not heard? What have you not heard? A young man said something that broke my heart, that at this level he cannot sit down under anybody for ministration because he knows what the Lord has imputed in him. He doesn't work like that, child of God. Because when you are busy ruling out errors that are found in the message, remember that it has spiritual content that can save your soul. Finally, how are you handling members of your family that God has given grace and God is using them? Some of them are our children growing up. Because of the way the Lord is using them in the place of prayer, you are seeing it, you are picking offense from there. Hear me? If you pick offense from a spiritual activity, you lose the spiritual content. Some of them the Lord is using to expose the word very well. You are picking offense. Hear me, child of God. I want to let you know. That your life can turn around when God's grace is embedded upon your life. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for reminding us this morning that we must not take your word for granted. Give us grace to grow in this and cause our day to be prosperous. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Thank you and God bless you. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website, www.acnntv.com.